So welcome to the channel and today we're going to be talking about Minimax M2.1, one of the new state-of-the-art open source models. So the other week I did a video about Z.AI's DLM 4.7 and I tested it with some AI transformation prompts and I was quite impressed. But the pace of releases in the end of the year has been absolutely insane and it's no different here with Minimax. And we're going to try out those same prompts again just to get a sense of what's different, what's better, what could be worse, what other features are hiding in these models, which I think a lot of people are sleeping on because they are only a few months behind the Claude, Gemini, ChatGPT models. If you're thinking about cost and efficiency and the ability to run models on your own hardware, yes, there are some challenges with these models, but you should definitely be taking them seriously and evaluating them for use in your business. So what do we have here? Exceptional multilingual capabilities to elevate code engineering. So they have been building out a lot of things to differentiate them from other open source models. So one of the biggest claims that they make is exceptional multi-programming language capabilities. In M2.1, we have systematically enhanced capabilities in Rust, Java, Golang, C++, Kotlin, Objective-C, TypeScript, JavaScript, and other languages. The overall performance on multi-language tasks has reached industry-leading levels, covering the complete chain from low-level system development to application layer development. Now, this is something you've seen on the x.com feedback and some of the other videos that people have been putting out. They think that this model is only a few months behind where Claude Code and ChatGPT Codex is. So this is big. Now, you can see on the benchmarks, this model is not competing against Claude Opus 4.5 or ChatGPT 5.2 Pro, but it's better than Gemini, Gemini 3 Pro on some benchmarks already, and it's better or not far behind Claude Sonnet 4.5. So this is a very powerful model, and it's open source. Some of the first impressions are quite interesting, and some of these benchmarks mean that the open source world is shipping and delivering improvements to the ability of these models every few months. Now that open source and open weight models are out in the world, people are going to be fine tuning and training and improving on this technology. And it's going to be a lot cheaper and more accessible to people outside of the major developed countries because the cost is so much lower. So let's have a look at some of these things they've got here. End to end office automation, it's a good one. Local deployment guide, how to use. If you use Olama, you can also run Olama Minimax Cloud. I tried that out. It's actually quite cool. It's another option there for deployment. Now, let's go back to the prompt. So you might recall this one for the last video, but what we're doing here is we're checking, can Minimax deliver outputs that will be useful to someone working in AI transformation? So we're just going to run this. You can see its thinking is exposed. Let's see. It's doing some deep thinking. That's cool. If we expand the deep thinking modal, you can see it is putting together all of the things we asked for in our prompt. So let's see what we get. What I'm actually going to do to save time is I'm going to kick off some of the other prompts just so we can quickly take a look at what's happening here. Nice. So we're starting to get the output that we requested. There's a table. So one thing you'll notice when you're testing out these open source models is that that final level of fine tuning and quality isn't quite there yet for written content, but it's an awful lot better than you might expect. And I think a lot of companies are going to be making really hard choices about how low do they want the cost of running AI tool when they're going to be need to be processing potentially billions or tens of billions of tokens every week to handle enterprise workloads, how low do they want to push that cost? And these open source models, if the performance is only a few month, months behind the frontier, the cost implications of these models might drive a lot more migration and use of them, especially outside of the Western countries. So let's have a look. Nice little AI readiness assessment, prioritize use case portfolio. This is all pretty standard stuff. There's some light formatting issues. A few M dashes appearing. 
three phase implementation timeline risk register. The risk register is better than the Z.AI one shot one, so that's interesting. API dashboard, there are more KPIs, interesting. Inclusion next steps, so there we go. Prompt one, the second one looked like, still going. Change management plan, so what do we have? Stakeholder analysis, pretty standard change management deliverable here. One thing I've noticed is union and labor always seems to come through in a lot of these open source model models. I wonder why that is. Cool. Communication. Oh yeah, that's quite a detailed strategy. It'd be hard work getting executives to adhere to that, but that's quite thorough for a comms plan. Phased communication approach, program design, Champions, protected learning time implementation, that's a good one. Governance framework, compliant, resistance response playbook, that's a good one. Job security concerns, skill inadequacy concerns, measurement framework. For a first shot, this is not too bad. You'd need to tweak and review a lot of things in here, but that's not too bad. I think that's better than the GLM 4.7 one. Let's have a look at the next one. Build versus buy versus hybrid analysis. Same recommendation. This formatting here comes from a lot of AI models. I really wonder what it is. Weighted scores, risks, hybrid architecture. Well, so that is very short. Interesting. That definitely didn't hit the mark. Next prompt, business case. What have we got here? Can Minimax deliver? Formatting thing, I really want to know what that is. I've seen it in Gemini as well. I should do another video on that. Formatting. Numbers, but formatting is not nice. Cost of inefficiencies, table, nice little hallucinated content. But hey, based on the prompt, a lot of the modeling is just pumped out into table. Again, some formatting issues on the presentation side. Any tangible benefits as well. Summary tables. Look, not too convinced on that. The vibe is a couple of formatting errors and maybe a little bit wordy, but let's go to the next prompt and then I'm just going to think a bit more about the vibe I'm getting from Minimax for these sorts of AI transformation prompts. Obviously, these aren't just deliverables that you'd send out the door. This is about iterating back and forth with an AI agent on a deliverable. You'd need to have the right context. You'd need to ensure that all of your obligations are being met, but this sort of non-coding use, I think, is a very good test for what the reasoning and thinking capabilities of these models is. So let's check that last one, which is an ethics question. So I'm going to talk a bit more about this one. So this one is where we're asking the AI to play the role of an ethics and governance advisor to healthcare organizations. There's some scenarios which challenge how well the AI reasons about different ethical issues that can arise through the use of AI in medical scenarios, and we want to see what it comes up with. So, what does it come up with? It's a nice little charter, stakeholder mapping analysis, it's good. This is richer than what Z.AI produced, so there are additional stakeholders identified, which is interesting. Core governance. Principles. So instead of a table for core governance principles, it's written them out and with an operational definition, measurable criteria, and responsible party. So that's more in depth output than I expected. So that's good. Governance structure, some extra committees that it identified. Scenario testing. So missed tumor with delayed diagnosis. So what does, do they say? It's a clinical review trigger protocol that needs to be put in place, an accountability assignment, some Mandarin characters in the output, which again, you see quite a bit on the open source models. A system vendor bears accountability. Cool. Clinical director holds operational accountability. Remediation program. A single serious incident of this nature would trigger several systemic reviews, committees, governance. Interesting. So, I mean, having seen some of these remediation type governance things, it's definitely been uh, exposed to a lot of training data around things like this. Interesting. Differential performance by age, performance monitoring program, accountability assignment, remediation process. 
Look, that's all fine. I think this is actually more detailed than AI transformation output we got from GLM 4.7. That's interesting. And this is my favorite one, inappropriate overriding of correct AI findings. So what's the scenario? A radiologist consistently overrides AI recommendations that are subsequently determined to be correct, leading to patient harm in three documented cases over a six-month period. Detection mechanisms. The issue would be detected through the network's override monitoring program. Case review processes, peer review processes, accountability assignment, remediation process. Interesting. Targeted training. If the remediation is unsuccessful and patient safety concerns persist, the network may need to consider restrictions on the radiologist's scope of practice or other employment actions. Minimax definitely wants to be a strong manager. Interesting. And the implementation rates and appendices. What's that one? So based on some of these test prompts for Minimax 2.1, it's a little bit better than Z.AI's GLM 4.7, uh, which I'm surprised by. I thought it would be more coding related, but part of this exercise and why I'm making a lot of these videos now is for each of these models, you need to build up for your organization your own set of prompts that you run through every time a model comes out. So you start to build a sense for your own business, for your own industry, of what different model using which different settings generate which sort of outputs that either meet your quality expectation or don't meet your quality expectation. This evaluation of model output is gonna be one of the most important judgment tasks that you face over the next few years when you're either doing an AI transformation or rolling out an AI agentic workflow in your business. What I'd suggest is you head over to Minimax, try it out with a couple of prompts. If you've been using agentic coding tools like ChatGPT Max or Core Code, you can try it out if you pay for one of the plans. And it'll be interesting to see what sort of results you get. Drop a comment below. Can subscribe. I send out a Substack newsletter every week. I write about AI transformation from the human side, not about tips and tricks for prompting. I think that's quite a saturated space. But what I'm trying to do is apply my experience in project delivery and regulated organizations to this brave new world of AI transformation. I personally spend a lot of time testing out all of these tools and working with select clients to try and apply some of this into how they think about how AI transformation can work in their industry. And what I'd say is that going into 2026, there are so many lower cost open source options available and they're so much better than they were 12 months ago that now is exactly the right time to start trying out and testing some of these cheaper tools because you're going to be able to experiment, you're going to be able to learn, and then you're going to be able to figure out how to actually change your business so you're getting things to be better, faster, and cheaper in terms of value delivery out to your customers. So thanks for tuning in, and drop a comment below if you've tried out Minimax M2.1 and what you think about it and these sorts of models. I'll catch you in the next video.